Hi, Stephen Key here. Thank you for watching. Please tell your friends, subscribe down below. Oh, I'm going to talk. In fact, I'm going to share a story with you because a lot of people ask, you know, how did I get started? And I tell the story when I go on the road and I get to uh, give, a, I give a talk, but I never really, I don't tell the story all the time. I, I was at Santa Clara University. I was a uh, freshman studying business and I absolutely did not like what I was doing and by chance I took an art class and I found out that I loved working with my hands and I went home and I told my dad I want to be an artist and he said gee are you out of your mind and I said yeah he, so he gave me permission to, to change majors and change direction in my life and sure enough I went over to San Jose State University and became an art major and studied art and realized that's what I wanted to do with my life. I wanted to be a creative person, period. And that if I could be an artist creating things, I would do that for the rest of my life, right? I've never retired. So that's what I did. Now, what do you do when you, you get out of school and you, you know, you have, you've studied art? Now, I knew I wasn't that great of an artist. I mean, I was, I was okay, I wasn't great because I, I started so late. Um, so I went out and um, I was, I panicked to tell you the truth, I didn't know what to do, so I started making little soft sculpture out of nylons, and I'm going to show you this stuff in just a minute, and uh, they were okay at first, and I took them out to my first, uh, first fair, it was on Summit Road in Los Gatos, it was out in the middle of nowhere at a little, little school, I had a little table there, and I made soft sculpture, and I put it out there, and I didn't sell any that day. And, but I loved it. I loved the people. I loved the whole process. And from that, I started um, using colored nylons and started making uh, other types of characters. And I'm going to show you all this in a minute, especially a lot of vegetables. And, but everything had a smiling face on it. And people just liked it. And I, and I found that I had a product that was easy to make. I, I had made them all, which is crazy, but I liked it. And it was, I could do it quite quickly. And... I ended up uh, doing uh, art fairs, street fairs, anywhere I could do it. And I even opened up a little store in Capitola, California, where I sold my soft sculpture for about four years, along doing the street fairs and county fairs. And then I realized uh, after a while that doing soft sculpture uh, was very limited because how do you mass produce it? Because I, I knew how to sell product. And I knew how to create things that people wanted. I learned a lot by selling on, on street corners. But the, the main thing that I was missing, how do you scale up? How do you sell in stores all around the world? So um, I ended up in Fremont and that's when I be, became a pattern maker. Uh, there was someone there that was kind of pushing me to learn how to be a pattern maker. And, and during one summer, I started making uh, patterns and started making um, characters and everything was made out of paper and I could tape it together and before you know it I could make um, animals and things like that and that's that's how that was the next round and then after that I started Dex at Worlds of Wonder as you know and then I started I left Worlds of Wonder and I started building other types of products and it expanded it went from toys to novelty gift to packaging it went all over the place so my ability to make things, I, was, I think I've been all pretty good at building prototypes. Uh, fabric, like I said, nylon, started with nylons, went to fabric, and then from fabric I went to paper. So I, I have kind of an interesting uh, start and finish, and I ended up uh, designing um, packaging. So who knows why that went that direction. So anyway, you're going to look at this, uh, this deep dive, and I'm going to show you kind of how I started. And I'm also going to show you the first thing I, I actually made. It was called Finger Fun. Uh, you'll see a cell sheet, <sighs> not so great. And I actually made those and sold those myself for a while. I did not license that. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it. There's a couple things I'm gonna show that no one has seen ever, so enjoy it. And if you have any questions, please put them down below. And I, I hope you like these deep dives. Once again, this is Stephen Key. Thanks for watching. All right, I wanna show you one of the first projects that I did as a I don't know, probably 20 years old. It was called Finger Fun. There you go. There's my first idea. Not too, not too great, but there it is anyway. It had a hand and back. Uh, you wore a hat and the hand was in the back and you could adjust it to all these different positions. And I sold those for a couple years. That was actually my very first idea that I started making myself. Over here, you're going to see 
uh, a lot of soft sculpture. In fact, that's what I did for many, many years, um, all by hand. There's three peas in a pod. There's Mr. Carrot, Mr. Banana, and Tom Mado. And uh, I sold those at street fairs and county fairs up and down United, up and down California for many, many years. In fact, you can see a couple other ones here. There's some grapes, there's a big TV set, a watch. And I sold those, um, like I said, at street fairs, but also I had a little store in Capitola. And in front of the store, I had two life-size dolls. So when people came into town, that was the first thing they would see. There's a picture inside the store with all the products that I made. But outside on a park bench, there was Laurel and Hardy. People would see that, they'd want to take their pictures with it. And next thing you know, they'd be inside the store. And here's a, an old photograph of me at a street fair. And you could tell that we, we created quite a crowd around um, the soft sculpture. Okay, I'm showing some things that I've never shown anybody. After making soft sculpture for, for many, many years, I realized I had to learn to be a pattern maker if I wanted to uh, scale up my work. And so here's one of the first uh, little plush animals I made. It was a little cat. Uh, and that was made by a pattern, so this was mass producible. And of course, there's a, this is like a Disney, I think it's flowy or flow, it's a little fish, there you go there. And here's some dancing bears, right, the bean bags. And then from this experience, learning how to design plush, I was able to get my first job designing plush for Dakin. There you can see a, there's a sea lion. My work got a little bit better, as you can tell. And from that, I went on to start designing plush um, for Worlds of Wonder and companies like Applause. There are two prototypes. Like those aren't even prototypes. Those are production from my model, from my prototypes that were selling in stores across the country. And here's one of my offices. This is a home office. Um, you could tell I like to do a little bit of drawing. And there's Big Goofy. He's really big. Um, and some other characters that I would that I would make. And then you could see some licensed characters down there. There's my high flyers that I licensed. Um, at the time I did a lot of Disney uh, plush. That's one of my uh, samples that I made for, I don't know who at the time, but I love making Disney plush. Like I said, I made quite a few samples. I started designing in plush. First it was soft sculpture. They were nylons. Then I started doing plush, but I did a lot of work in paper. These are cups with little characters that fit right into the cup. I loved working on paper. In fact, paper was colored um, paper was really great because the visually it looks like a, a new it looks like a brand new product, but it's all paper. You can see this here. That was a, an idea I had for puzzle on top of a, a lid for a cup. Here's another paper model. This was a rotating plate. You can see it there, all made out of paper. Of course, I did a lot of work for fast food restaurants. And that's paper, of course. And here's another one. Here's a bag with a little, some Velcro, so you can paper games. And here's a pizza box that popped in. You could play a little basketball there, too. So you could tell um, that I love building prototypes, but I realized you don't have to build prototypes all the time. And you have to be smart with your time. But there's nothing like building something and see it come to life. Here are a few more prototypes. This was my son, Johnny, when he was just a little boy. Expandable bag. Here's another variation. Here's my, my oldest daughter, Madeline. You can tell she's really happy that she's in some of these photographs. Another expandable bag, but this is for your lunch bag. And here's some paper hats. I really love working out of paper, as you could tell. And of course, I did quite a few other types of products that I built the prototypes. This is a little fanny pack that you could pull off and you could actually use it for a game, as you can tell right there. All right, I pulled back the curtain. I kind of showed you where I started. Uh, I just kind of showed you how I started and where I kind of ended up. And I'm going to keep on doing a couple more deep dives on some other projects to really peel back the curtain to show you from start to finish um, and, and hopefully that helps you get a, a better idea of how this process works. Stephen Key here. Thanks for letting me kind of share some of this stuff I've just kept over the years. 
I never thought I'd ever be talking about it, but here I am sharing this with you. Hope you enjoy it. Once again, Stephen Key, thank you very much. Hi, this is Stephen Key, and I just want to thank you for watching InventRight TV. We're here to save you time, save you money, and show you how you can bring your products to market through licensing. So please, subscribe down below, click on the button, and tell your friends. Thank you.